you doing? I'm CK with Anion Extraction Systems, and today we're gonna to be showing you our D-Wax column. Now, the D-Wax column comes standard with the Trifecta and Minifecta systems. So it's not some additional thing that you gotta upgrade or pay for. Um, it comes incorporated right in with the system itself. Now, our D-Wax columns are jacketed, um, and they're for use with a lab chiller, like a Jalabo FP50MA or similar. Um, what we do is we actually plumb in and out on the two ports there, and it's gonna circulate frozen solvent uh, through it, creating a uh, freezing process that happens here. Now, now we actually load this D-Wax column about halfway full with stainless steel ball bearings. What this does is provides a lot of surface area. So as we're chilling the extract as it's coming through and we're trying to freeze up to coagulize some of the unwanted stuff like the waxes and lipids and that sort of thing, it gives it a lot of surface area to stick to. Um, the bottom side of this has an actual strainer inside of it and what we usually do is recommend is putting a uh, filter Filtration, something similar like a coffee filter on the bottom of it, the stainless balls on top of it, and then as it goes through, those are our filter mediums to help filter it out. Now, a lot of our customers have found that with the de-waxing, running it during the process, they don't actually have to do a winterization after the fact or anything similar. This is really effective and really helpful for guys who aren't trying to go to a distillate. So if you're running, say, like a live resin or a shatter, for example, um, you can actually process it, run it through, and you've got material ready to sell coming right out of the system here. Now another feature that we built into the de-waxing here is actually a recovery port built into it. So it's similar to the one down on the collection vessel below. Um, that way we can actually pull um, right directly from the de-wax if needed. Um, this is gonna help out in both pulling some of the solvent from down here, down into the de-wax, if you're doing a de-wax process where you're actually gonna be um, housing it in here and storing, soaking it in the de-wax essentially for a while. Um, it also helps um, as part of pre-recovery, so you can actually start recovering some of the solvent while it's in the de-waxing. And what that does is that actually helps freeze the solvent um, in the process because as you're recovering it and evaporating it off, it chills it down. Now you're not going to be able to do a full recovery out of here, obviously, because the temperature is just not going to allow it, especially as we're chilling it from the outside instead of heating it. But what it does is it helps speed up the recovery process minimally, as well as helps pull your solvent and down into the de-wax column here. Now there's a couple different ways you can run with its de-waxing. Um, some of our customers prefer to do a soak where they pre-freeze this. Uh, basically we just keep the chiller running to this all the time so it's always ice, ice cold and sub-zero temperatures. So we'll actually pull, um, do a run, they'll drop their product down inside of here um, into the de-wax column, let it soak for anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour, um, and then actually flush it through the filtration process into the collection vessel. Um, a lot of our other customers find that that's not really needed, so they actually do a slow process through it. So they'll run the, run the materials column here, and then they'll slowly trickle it out of there by opening the valve, just cracking it, so that way it trickles through, and again, pulling it on the one down there. So that way the solvent slowly trickles through. Um, it breaks it down into a smaller amount of solvent, so it freezes easier as it's going through, and the idea is to catch um, a lot of the unwanted stuff, freeze it, and solidify it into a solid, so that way it's like a wax that builds up in there, and we're gonna catch that during the filtration process. Um, now, if you're doing the trickle-through method, you can obviously run the larger um, materials columns up here. If you are going to be doing the uh, soaking process, you're gonna to wanna to run with the smaller size materials columns. Um, we'll actually cover that a little bit later in a video labeled volumetrics to kind of show the different sizes and volumes of this system itself.